Hello, social media friends. It's Stephen Middleton coming to you live from Lancaster, South Carolina, in the north central part of the state. Today, I want to. Uh, this is my my seventh day. Uh, just just as a reminder, in this fourteen day challenge that I'm participating in with business leaders and entrepreneurs from around the world. You know, our purpose is to add value in the space of social media. With all of the things that are going on today in the world, you know, I take on this challenge enthusiastically. I want to be one of those voices that's adding something positive in the space of so uh, social media. And today, I want to talk with you about the power of desire. Uh, to use the title differently, I want to talk with you about the power of a single desire. Now, you know, I'm not talking about uh, something like as general as I want more money, you know, I want to just travel more. Uh, I want to get more specific than that. You know, what do you want is a, perhaps a good question to start with. What is it that you really want? Now, I'm not talking about a wish. Uh, all of us wish for things, but I want you to consider what do you really want in business? What do you really want in education? What do you really want to create in your life? What do you really want to leave your family when you're no longer on the planet? If you live in the Western world, as many of my contacts on social media do, not all of my contacts, but many of my contacts on social media, we, and I rarely use this word, in fact, I've never used this word in social media ever, we are truly blessed. We have more of any, everything, virtually everything. Uh, we have bigger houses. We have, many of us have multiple cars. And I know many of my connections on Facebook, some of you have three and four vehicles to drive on a day daily basis. Uh, many of you take vacations. Many of you own timeshares. You know, we are truly blessed if you live in the Western world. And this reminds me of a visit I made to Africa, to the African continent, a little while ago. I visited three countries on this particular visit. And I remember seeing a little girl in Lesotho. She was probably around six years old. Little, beautiful little girl. Her parents told me that she had to walk over a mile to get to school on a daily basis. The family lived in huts. Yes, I spent some time in a hut in the country of Lesotho. You know, their community center was simply a long hut. Uh, base, uh, built out of straws and things like that. Um, uh, they're, they're, many of them cooked outdoors, you know, would kill a goat maybe and, and just cook it outdoors in a big pot. Um, you know, that's a place that's where people lack a lot of opportunities. But they were enthusiastic. They were eager. They were ambitious. And many of them will come out of that village and go on to college because they have a desire. In South Africa, I went to one of those township schools where again I was told that many of these children would eat one meal a day. But I have pictures of those kids and me at, at one of their schools where they were smiling, they were laughing. And many of those children will come out of that condition and go to college and be successful in college. Then I went to Ghana, the same kind of situation, a, a more prosperous country, and so was South Africa, a more prosperous country than Lesotho. But once again, many of those individuals that I met in Ghana had to leave their houses at night and go out into the street to relieve themselves because they did not have indoor plumbing. But those of us in the West, we have many educational opportunities. There's a college or university in virtually every city. If you want to become a tradesman or tradewoman, tradeswoman, we can go to a community college where some of these institutions are giving away money to people who are willing to study plumbing, study electrician, to become an electrician, studying to become a carpenter. I know a couple of um, specialists in the state of Mississippi where I lived, where there was one skilled, in fact, he was a genius when it came to cabinetry. 
He said he was looking for individuals to mentor in his field, to pass on his, his skills. There was another person who was simply a genius when it came to working with his hand and restoring all old furniture like antique. He was really a savant. And he said that his greatest challenge was to find someone who wanted to learn his skill. So my question to you is, what is, what is it that you want? Uh, in this country, I firmly believe that it's possible for you to get what you want if you're clear about what you, what you want. I can think back in, in my childhood years when my great uncle, his name was William Mack. I don't mind sharing that with you. Uh, William Mack was an individual who had all kinds of adversity when he came into this world. He was not five feet tall. His shoulders were bent back. You know, when he, his feet were bent one to the left and one to the right, and when he walked, he waddled like a duck would waddle. But he had a desire. He told me when I was a child, he said, look, you know, I wanted to be able to find a job. I wanted to be able to find a mate. I wanted to be able to start a family. And he said back in those days, you know, men, the only jobs that were available in the country was working in the Puckwood, Puckwood factory in the woods. And he said he went into the woods and he went to the plant one morning along with a lot of these big guys who were healthy, some of them six feet tall and, and over, these grits eating guys in the country. And he said that they had to line up and the foreman would stand on the back of the truck and the foreman would look out into the sea of men to pick the men that they wanted, that he wanted to hire. And he said those big country boys tried to elbow him out of the way. He said he planted his feet solidly in the ground. And when those guys tried to push him away, he said that he remained steadfast to what he wanted. And he said that the foreman spotted him. And the foreman said, I want to hire that man. And he got his job uh, in the Puckwood Mill in, in, the, in the woods. And later on, he got a job at the paper mill in Charleston, where he worked his entire career. My uncle, William Mack, was one of the first men in my community that I knew who had a pickup truck. This pickup truck back in the day didn't have a key start. The start was on the floor. The start was actually on the floor. In the newer cars today, there was a, there's a push button on the dashboard. Well, back in the day, the push button was on the floor. When Uncle had to start his truck, he had to stretch his body out because he was so short he could not even reach the starter. But he, was, he had that truck. He was able to take care of himself. He courted a woman, married her, and then had a bunch of children from there. Uncle told me that desire, he wanted something. He didn't believe in the word can't. But not only that, consider um, athletes. You've all heard the name Babe Ruth. You know, Babe Ruth has a reputation as being one of the best athletes, baseball players who have ever lived in, in this country. But in 1931 alone, Babe Ruth struck out 51 times. He was at bat 663 times indeed, and he was, you know, but he struck out 51 times. Suppose that he had stopped when he was 40, at 40. Suppose he had stopped when he was at number 45. He could have quit any time along the way, but he stuck to it. In his career, even though he was the home run king for many years, he struck out 1,330 times during the course of his career because he wanted to be a baseball player. He loved being a baseball player. He showed up every time he could to, to, to be that baseball player. In our recent presidential election, we're all celebrating, many of us are celebrating, and I don't want to be political here, but many of us are celebrating Mr. Joe Biden, who was elected president in this, uh, in this election. But you know, this was not the first election that Joe Biden had made his bid for the presidency. This was his third try. He had failed to reach the presidency on two previous occasions. Joe Biden, in fact, he was vice president for eight years. He could have said, you know something, at 78 years of age, I've done my best. I'm going to throw in the towel. I'm not going to do anything more. So my question to you is, what do you want? I say it's possible for you to get what you want. Now, some of you that I know, and I've been told this from people who are my age and retired, you know, they got a lot of money and the like, but well, you can make some to give to your grandchildren. 
You can give to St. Jude's Hospital. You can donate to, to any charity that you have. This is a time for individuals who want to do more, who want to have more to do more. If you're interested in success, if you're interested in the success principle, if you're interested in the success puzzle, I've collected some material that I want to give you. Um, one of them is entitled the, select, the, the Success Puzzle. I will share that with you free of charge, obviously. I'm gonna give it away to you. Uh, this is not a bid to get, uh, to get you to do anything. I want to give it to you. Just go to the message area, send me a, a, a message in, in Facebook Messenger with your email address. I'll email it to you. Look, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, uh, you know, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to be alive today. I'm excited to be alive in America today. So many people are saying, oh, I'm going to leave the country. Well, I'm not going anywhere. There's nothing but opportunity here. And I want to support you in getting more of what you want. But I want you to tell me what is it that you want. Have a great day. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next uh, um, um, episode in this challenge. Have a good one. Bye.